Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. So this video is a quick demonstration of DNS over HTTPS with Brute Retail. So over here, we have our Retail server, which we have started on our domain called as evasionlabs.com. On our domain, we have two NS records configured, one for DNS1 and the other for DNS2. I'll go back and I will start Commander and we will connect to our evasionlabs.com. Okay, I think the password is incorrect. And yes, perfect. So we'll go to C4 Profiler, click on Add DOH Listener, and we will add a DNS uh, host over here. The DNS host will be the same as that of the NS records that we've configured. So it will be DNS1 dot evasionlabs.com comma DNS2 dot evasionlabs.com. We have a check-in A record and an idle A record. So whenever your Badger connects back to your DNS resolver, it will send an A request. The A request is the, uh, will be in an HTTPS format and that A record request will be forwarded to your evasionlabs.com. The evasionlabs.com will then forward it to dns1.evasionlabs.com which will then try to resolve it and try to extract whatever data has been sent. If it wants to send the response back, it needs to send the response back in a TXT record. Now it would need to tell the payload that it need, the payload needs to send a TXT request so that it can send a TXT response. In such scenario, the listener will send back a check-in A record uh, in return, which means uh, the badger will verify that on its end. And if it, re if it receives a check-in A record, it will then go ahead and send the TXT record. If it receives an idle A record, then it will uh, basically go ahead and just sleep in a loop in an encrypted uh, ROP gadget, and then it will try to connect back uh, sometime later on, as per the sleep schedule that you've configured. So we'll specify the check-in A record, the idle A record, any spoof TXT record that you might want, which would look like normal for your blue team or anyone else, you can add that up over here. I'll just simply type it as Google hyphen site hyphen verification equals to some random value. Your rotational host, this is where your uh, actual payload would connect back. I'll type DNS.Google. We can specify more than one over here, like CloudFront, Mozilla, anything else the port, the user agent, and the header. In the header, we will have to specify the content type and it has to be a DN application slash DNS message. Without this content type, the server cannot verify it and the server is going to be our dns.google which is where we'll be sending our post HTTPS request. The URI is dns-query for our dns.google. It might be different for uh, different servers. Windows, SSL, any proxy that you might have through which you want to uh, send the data through, comma not, and I'll just select create a random set of authentication key. I'll click on the server configuration here to view the server configuration. We can see the DOH configuration that we have. We can validate that our server is properly working by sending a request to uh, any of the DNS resolvers and sending them, asking them to resolve DNS1 or DNS2. And we'll also see if we are able to verify our spoof TXT record over here. So I'll go back, I'll type dig at 8888dns1.evasionlabs.com and we can, you can see we are getting our idle A record as a response back. If I query hyphen T TXT, we should get the exact spoofed record that we had configured over here. And finally, now we will create our payload. I'll create a executable payload here and save it to my documents directory. I'll clean this. I'll go back, refresh, and you can see we have our badger underscore x64. I'll double click this and wait for my connection to get back. And you can see we have a DOH connection from our payload. By default, as you can see, it might take some time for the response to be retrieved in full. The reason for that is because every time the payload comes back in, it will send some data in a very chunked manner. Because unlike HTTPS request where you are sending lots and lots of data and uh, you can send a good amount of buffer in a single request, 
that's not really possible with DNS over HTTPS because uh, every subdomain value inside an A record is up to a maximum 64 bytes as per the RFC protocol, which means that would be uh, the amount of or the number of bytes that you would be limited to per request. So I'll go ahead and run PWD idle time to see how long does it take for it to respond back. If it's sending a really large command, you can enable DNS logs and DNS logs can be enabled by going to the server and selecting enable disable DOH debug logs. As soon as you enable it on the server end, you would see all the requests that the badger is sending across. As you can see the request on which it is actually querying. So if I send some large command, something like user info which sends around 4,000 or 5,000 bytes of data, it will take some time for me to get a response back and you would be able to see the request that we are continuously receiving from our DNS payload that we have on the endpoint. If you don't want to see the response that you are receiving, you can simply go here and click on the disable DOH logs and you would stop receiving the responses that you're seeing over here on the uh, logs front. This is something that you might want to enable when you are trying to debug the whether your payload is running properly or not. It's not something that you might want to use during an engagement because it would slow uh, since it's printing every time a request is being received, it would slow down the uh, response that it is being received in this case. So over here, I'll just quickly go and disable it and you won't see a connection back till all the uh, chunked responses are received because what the badger does is that let's say the user info response is around 4000 bytes. And if the badger wants to send that whole data, it would split that into multiple chunks, each of maybe 64 bytes or any similar uh, size over there. And it would keep on sending that. Now this whole data that your server is receiving, the whole portion is encrypted in nature, the whole network traffic. So the server cannot decrypt the data and identify which badger is sending the data. And the reason for that is because the requests that are continuously being received are partial requests of a full-fledged encrypted response. Which means if you're sending a really large query or if you're running some C-sharp tool like Seatbelt or something else, you might have to wait around 3, 4 or 5 minutes depending upon how fast the queries are being received. But yes, it does work flawlessly over for a long period of time. I've used this in my last engagement in February where I was not able to gain access to via any other technique and I used a DNS over HTTPS along with a Slack C2. Uh, under which I was able to work throughout my engagement and I was able to um, stage a lot of different executables including C sharp, BOFs and a lot of other things. So yes, yeah, this is a quick demonstration of DNS over HTTPS with Brutetail starting from release v1.0 and that would be all for this video.